I have a confession to make. I am going to be turning 40 in the next two weeks. And if you want to leave Joseph a comment below, he's turning the big 4-0 in less than a week. And to be honest, I am really excited. Maybe it's part of the fact that I've been telling myself that 40 is the new 30, or maybe there's just something that sounds so awesome about turning 40, and living my life as unapologetically as possible and really starting to take control and writing the new narrative of my life on my terms. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the 10 financial goals to achieve by age 40. But first, I want to welcome you to the Permission to Be Wealthy channel, where me and my husband Joseph have open and honest conversations about what it's like to build wealth, to invest, and to pursue financial independence. As a family of four, we are now debt-free millionaires living in Portugal and designing our life on our terms. And I wanted to tell you, thank you so much for being here. If you like what we have to say today and if you like the topics, please like and subscribe to our channel. I was actually taking a look at the analytics of those that view our videos and over 90% of you have not yet subscribed. So consider this your kind reminder to subscribe to the channel so that you can join us weekly and hear what we have to say about our financial independence journey and share what we've been learning along the way. So a few statistics about those of us in our 40, because I like data and I wanted to share this with you. In the United States, the median net worth of people in their 40s is $231,400. Compared to people in their 20s and 30s, there are more married couples in their 40s. People in their 40s tend to see the peak of their careers at this point in time, which I can completely relate. And people in their forties are really starting to think about their retirement, which makes sense that the life expectancy is 79.11 years. 40 is that sweet spot in the middle. And so you want to start getting really intentional and purposeful with thinking about what the rest of your life needs to look like and what you need to accomplish in order to live your best life in the second half of your years around the sun. So let's go ahead and get into it. Goal number one is getting really clear on your dreams and your why. And for me, for a long time, I thought that my aspirational dream was to work well into my 60s, to become an executive leader at this large global company, or to become a GM managing a large P&L. But the reality was, is when I gave myself the real time to sit back and think about what my dream life looked like, I recognized that I really wanted to reclaim my time. I wanted to be able to spend my time with my loved ones. I wanted to get creative. I wanted to tap into the things that brought me joy. And if I was going to work, I wanted to be working on something that I felt was really aligned to my values and was going to leave a lasting legacy on this earth. So in other terms, you want to get really clear on what type of lifestyle you ultimately want to live, what the cost of that lifestyle will be, or ultimately where you want to be located when you're living your dream life. The second goal is getting really effective with your debt. And I like to break this up into two specific sections. High interest debt, which is anything over 7%. This could be credit card debt, the average credit card APR right now is over 16%. So imagine that's something that could be silently eroding away your ability to build wealth if you don't address it and pay it off aggressively. I like to work with my clients to see if there is a way that we can pay off high interest debt within a year or as aggressively possible. The other type of debt is anything under 7%. This is typically mortgages and student loans. For some of us, we may have pursued an MBA or some other professional education. And some of these things may linger with us for a long period of time. You definitely don't wanna carry these debts well into retirement. You want to have an effective pay down strategy and getting really clear on how you can do that is really important. Imagine this, for Joseph and I, we had $420,000 worth of debt, was all low interest debt. But when we looked at our financial plan and we looked at the power of actually paying that debt off and then being able to allocate all of our hard earned discretionary income towards 100% saving and investing, it really allowed us to make massive progress over three to four years as high income earners who got really intentional and purposeful about our financial plan. Now goal number three is getting your credit score to 800 or more. So right now the average credit score in the United States is 714 and having a healthy credit score opens doors to better interest rates, lower insurance premiums that your lender may charge you, as well as having a lot more options on being able to put less money down whenever you go to secure a loan. So if you take any action 
collection off this specific topic, one thing I'd recommend that you do is go pull your credit report, make sure you're very clear about what your credit score is, and then start researching what you can do to start increasing your credit score. Okay, your eyes aren't deceiving you. Yes, I look different. When I was editing this video, I realized that I left out one of the goals, and this is real life, so I came back into the office a day later to make sure that we got this important goal in here for you. Goal number four is career resilience. And if you've been working since your early to mid 20s, you have about 15 to 20 years under your belt now. And while many of you may be hitting the peak of your career, it's also a great opportunity to get even more intentional about what you want out of your career so that both your levels of fulfillment at work remain high and you're getting paid for the value and skills that you bring to the table. So within this one, there's a few things that I recommend. Self-exploration, so reaching out to your network, asking yourself questions about what you do and don't like about your work, and really taking stock of all the skills, experience, and years of history that you bring to the table in your specific domain. You then may wanna think about upskilling or learning in different areas in your domain because it's always really important to understand what skill gaps you may have in actually addressing them, or make sure that you're just giving yourself an opportunity to be in a constant state of learning, whether it's in your specific field, industry, or if you really want to make a pivotal shift at this point in time in your career. The third thing is if you are at a point in time of your life and in your career where you wanna take some real meaningful action, now is the time to do it. And I'm a big advocate of the fact that whenever you get in the driver's seat of your career, no one knows you better than you, no one understands the value that you bring to the table better than you, and you taking real meaningful action and following up on the discussions that you're having is really key. So go brush up your LinkedIn, go talk to your extended network, go start documenting the skills skills and experience that you have so that you're confident going into every conversation that you're going to have associated to this action plan if you're deciding to make a change. And if you need any help, it's great to reach out to your mentors or hire a career coach. They help you really work through what's on your mind, what your goals are, help you even get connected to other people in different networks, especially if you're thinking about making a big shift at this point in time, some outside in perspective can help tremendously. I teach a class called Leveling Up Your Career and Your Income. It talks about how I built my career over the course of 15 years and the framework that I use not only to make meaningful progress and changes in my career, but how I also 9X my income over the course of that time. I'll put a link to that class below in the description. Goal number five is making sure that you have an emergency fund. And what I mean by this is making sure that you have an actual savings account that's in a high yield savings account. You'll get way better interest rates off of that. And if you're starting off with this first item, this is something I talk to my clients at the very beginning of our conversations, that you have at least one month of living expenses saved in your high yield savings account. Once you can get to that, then up it to three to six months, depending on your living circumstances. And then of course, as you're inching towards retirement, you may wanna consider having two years worth of emergency savings in the case that the market isn't performing well and you don't have to sell your investments at a loss. Every month, Bankrate publishes the top high yield savings accounts on their website. I'll actually put that link in the description below so that you can refer to that and see what some of the best options are. Okay, so goal number six is making sure that your retirement is secured. And you may be telling yourself, oh yeah, make sure that I'm investing for my retirement. What I mean by this specific one is making sure that your retirement is secure by making sure that you have achieved coast fire. And what that means is you have invested enough into your retirement accounts, like your 401k, your different IRAs, that you can't access necessarily until 60, 65, traditional retirement age, but you have invested enough in those accounts where you don't have to invest in them at all anymore. And the growth that those accounts will see over time into your retirement years is now secure. I have a financial independence planner that I teach and it helps you actually map out this exact question and have you reach coast fire, yes or no. So I'll link that in the description below. Goal number seven is making sure that you have a plan for your mental health. And when I talk about mental health, I don't mean that there's anything wrong with you. I mean that you're opening yourself up to the opportunity of exploring more about yourself, identifying ways where you can better communicate with other people and making sure that you give yourself the opportunity to unlock the best life that you can be living 40 and beyond. And you don't have to wait to do this until you're 40. I think Joe and I were 35, 36 when we actually went to couples therapy. And at the time I was really struggling with being a first time mom, a present wife and continuing to work on this grind corporate career that was really sucking some of the life out of me. And I was really struggling with this idea of my identity and my self-worth and what that all meant wrapped up in my career. And it wasn't until we went to couples therapy whenever our therapist asked us, hey, if Stephanie left this job, what would the worst case scenario be? And so that forced Joseph and I to have some real honest conversations with each other. We actually started 
taking action to write out our first real budget in a long time. We got very clear about our income, our spending. It led me down a path of projecting our financial progress. And lo and behold, we're investing multi six figures a couple of years in a row. We pay off of our debt. We become millionaires. We decide that I can go ahead and leave my job because we've made enough financial progress to where we can move to another country. I'm getting excited because that was something that really was a catalyst that allowed me to unlock new thinking for myself, new confidence for myself, and a really beautiful thing for Joseph and I being able to pursue the next chapter in our lives together in a way that I think has just really helped us grow. So if you're looking for a sign to take this one really seriously, I hope this is it for you. Goal number eight is making sure that you have a physical health plan. And I like to call this my longevity health plan. The reality is, is I am going to be a 40 year old woman with two boys under the age of five who are incredibly active and rambunctious. Earlier this year, I would wake up and something new hurt, whether it was my knees, my back, my shoulder, my neck, you name it. And I knew I had to figure out how to take this body that had brought two kids into the world that wasn't functioning the same way that it used to and start taking care of it more. So Joseph and I decided to go ahead and get a personal trainer and a nutritionist earlier in September this year. And since we did that, not only am I stronger, and this isn't about the looks, right? This is about feeling stronger. This is about being really mentally sharp. And this is about being in a way better mood so that I can enjoy Portugal and the outdoors and wake up every day really excited to go tackle the things that are really important to me and live my best life with my kids and my husband. And now we're at goal number nine, which is making sure that you have a holistic financial plan. And I like to call this for my clients, the ABCs of money inventory. So we take a look at the A, assessing your income. So how much are you making? When are you making it? Are you contributing to your 401k? All of those details. Then being aware of your spending. So what are you paying for your essential expenses, your non-essential expenses, any debt, and any other savings plans that you have. And then C is creating an allocation for the gap. So if you have anything left over, how are you paying debt down faster? How are you saving and investing for short-term and long-term financial goals? And by looking at this body of work, the ABCs of money inventory, you're able to not only understand what your money Money looks like right now, but what it might look like in the future, whether it's your income or what you plan to spend, it also gives you a lot of motivation on what you can do to get more aggressive about potentially pursuing financial independence a little earlier. And that brings us to our 10th goal, which is legacy planning. And to be honest, we can create an entire video on this one, but this one consists of trust and estate planning, purchasing insurance if you need it, and then making sure that you're speaking with your aging parents to make sure that you're all very clear about what their plans for retirement are and how you fit into that picture. Establishing these actions gives you the ability to make sure that you have control and say over what happens to your assets in the event of your passing. It allows you to have peace of mind that your loved ones are taken care of. And depending on the state or the country that you live in, having a trust and estate plan makes sure that you can mitigate some of the fees that you might have to pay if you have to go to probate in a given state state. That process can be not only costly, like hundreds of thousands of dollars, but it can also take a very long time. Now I understand that this could be a very uncomfortable topic to discuss, but the cool thing was that I got to actually do some trust and estate planning with my mom over the summer. And I had an opportunity to do a podcast with her earlier this year, where I got to talk to her about how it felt to do her trust and estate plan, why she finally got to it. And she said one thing that really stuck with me. She wanted me and my brothers to be in a position to be able to celebrate her life in the event of her passing, instead of us being worried about all the financial implications and the, did we know, what did you think? What, do you, what did we think she thought? All of those things she didn't want us to have to worry about. She wanted us to be able to live a bit easier in the event of her passing, knowing that she thought about this and she had conversations with us in advance. And I'm really honored that she gave me the opportunity to participate in that with her. So there you have it, the 10 goals that you should have in place by age 40. Now I understand that you may not have all of these things established right now and by no means should you be disheartened if you have some work to do. The goal of this video was to make sure that you had an understanding of what this list is so that you could start taking action to create clarity, control, and confidence on how you wanted to design your best life 40 and beyond. So if you liked today's video, please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. And I hope today's conversation gave you just a little more food for thought on how to give yourself permission to be wealthy.